Hello, everybody, and welcome to the continuation of the Black History Month Athletes Throughout Sports History Workout Part 2. Part 1, there were 18 athletes that hopefully you were able to learn a lot about. And for Part 2, there are 17 more athletes. Um, in this version, there are a lot of athletes that I'm assuming you maybe have never heard of. Um, because there were a lot of athletes that I learned a whole lot about that I never knew before. So that made it a little bit more fun for me. Um, there, once again, are the facts that you will hear me read to you and you will be able to see pictures of the athletes, followed by a 30 second timer with a quote of the athlete and a movement I'd like you to do. Now, I don't want you to just do the movements that are on the slides with the quotes. I want you to move your body as I'm reading the quote to you. And you have a few options. You can simply just march in place, you can walk in place, you can jog in place, you can step side to side as I'm reading to you. I just want you moving. Um, obviously during those times feel free to take a sip of water. I want you to stay hydrated, but I don't want you just standing still staring at the screen. You guys do enough of that with all of this remote learning. So I want you to be moving your body as I'm reading the facts to you about every athlete. I have a really good feeling that you're gonna like this one. If you have any questions on it, feel free to shoot me an email um, and just have some fun with it while you're moving your body. Have a great workout, stay hydrated, and I can't wait for you to learn about these inspirational, amazing athletes in sports history. Have fun. Blake Bolden grew up in Ohio playing youth hockey. She went to Northwood School, a private school in Lake Placid, New York, while playing for the under-18 Team USA. She was a member of the first championship team and won the gold medal in 2008 and 2009. She played hockey for Boston College and had three Frozen Four appearances, was named Hockey East Defensive Player of the Year, and received All-American honors. She played for the Boston Blades in the Canadian Women's Hockey League. She was the first African-American player drafted in the first round of the CWHL history. She played in the first CWHL All-Star Game, and her team won the Clarkson Cup in 2015. On October 11, 2015, she became the first African-American player to compete in the National Women's Hockey League. She played for the Boston Pride. Her team played against the CWHL's Les Canadiens de Montreal, in the 2016 Outdoor Women's Classic, the first professional women's hockey outdoor game. Her team won the inaugural Isabel Cup in 2016. She was selected for the All-Star Game in 2017, winning the fastest shot skills game with a shot of 87 miles per hour. For one season, she played hockey in Switzerland before coming back to the NWHL to play on the Buffalo Buttes. In February 2020, Blake Bolden became the first black female professional scout for the LA Kings in the NHL and the second ever female professional scout in the NHL. The hockey equipment company, Ribeiro, launched the first female named hockey stick in Blake's honor. Blake Bolden said, This is my path, my responsibility. When I was a little girl, I didn't look up and see anyone who looked like me so I really took that to heart. And I want to be that person for all of the little girls behind me. And I don't even see it as pressure, more so as a privilege. LeBron James was the number one draft picked by the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was the 2004 Rookie of the Year. He is a four-time NBA champion, a four-time NBA MVP, and a 16-time NBA All-Star. He is the youngest player to reach 30,000 career points in NBA history. He currently holds the record for most points scored during the playoffs with 5,995. He is a two-time Olympic gold medalist and has a lifetime deal with Nike. He runs a nonprofit organization called the LeBron James Family Foundation that helps children in his hometown area. In collaboration with the Akron Public School System, the I Promise School for At Risk LeBron Children James said, was opened in 2018. No matter how great an individual is, it takes a team to win a championship.
Jesse Owens was born with the name James Cleveland Owens and was called JC. He got the name Jesse when he moved from Alabama to Ohio because one of his teachers couldn't understand his southern accent and didn't realize he was actually saying JC. The name Jesse stuck with him for the rest of his life. During high school in the 1933 National Interscholastic Championships, he won three events. He went to Ohio State University in Columbus, and during a track meet in 1935, in just 45 minutes, he tied the world record for the 100-yard dash, broke the world record for the 220-yard dash, broke the world record for the 220-yard low hurdles, and broke the world record for the long jump. In the 1936 Olympics in Berlin, Germany, Owens won four gold medals. Just years before the beginning of World War II, Owens was allowed to stay in the same hotels as white people in Germany, but he couldn't do the same in many parts of the United States at the same time. Back home, upon arriving at a reception honoring him in New York, he had to take the freight elevator. In 1970, he was inducted into the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. In 1976, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Gerald Ford. In 1979, he was awarded the Living Legend Award by President Jimmy Carter. In 1980, just after his death, the Jesse Owens Foundation was founded to promote the development of youth to their fullest potential, along with the Ruth and Jesse Owens Scholars Program at The Ohio State University. In 1981, USA Track and Field created the Jesse Owens Award, which is given to the top track and field athlete in the country. In 1983, he was inducted into the first class of the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame. In 1984, Berlin named a school after Owens and a street near the Olympic Stadium. In 1996, the Jesse Owens Memorial Park and Museum was dedicated in his hometown of Oakville, Alabama. In 2001, Ohio State University dedicated the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium for track and field events, and there are three recreational centers named after him on the campus. There are many other statues, parks, and even hospitals named after Owens around the United States. In 2016, the movie Race was released, which is about Owens' college career and Olympic stardom. Jesse Owens said, Find the good. It's all around you. Find it, showcase it, and you'll start believing in it. Michael Jordan didn't make the varsity basketball team during his sophomore year of high school because he was too short at the height of 5'11". He worked hard every day until the next season, grew four inches, and made a huge impact on his high school team his last two seasons. He was a six-time NBA champion, a five-time NBA MVP, a six-time NBA Finals MVP, and was the first player to be named the Finals MVP three years in a row. After retiring from the NBA in 1993, he signed a minor league baseball contract with the White Sox. Air Jordan, with Nike, launched in 1984. In 1995, he comes back to the NBA on the Bulls, but retires again in 1999. In 2001, he made another comeback to the NBA, but this time to the Washington Wizards. In 2003, he officially retired. In 2009, he was named the Chief Wish Ambassador for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and was also inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. In 2016, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. Jordan is a supporter of many causes, locally and nationally. Michael Jordan said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the winning shot and missed. 
I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Althea Gibson became a local table tennis champion, which later rolled over to the sport of tennis. She started playing tennis at a young age and wasn't allowed in many tournaments because of the color of her skin, but she never gave up. Eventually, her gameplay and skills spoke for themselves. She attended Florida A&M on a sports scholarship. She's the first black tennis player to compete at the U.S. National Championships in 1950. She was the first black tennis player to compete at Wimbledon in 1951. And in 1956, she became the first black athlete to win a Grand Slam tournament. In 1957, she became the first black athlete to win at Wimbledon and was the first champion to receive the trophy personally from Queen Elizabeth II. Before she turned pro in 1959, she won 56 singles and doubles championships. Even through all of her success and many championships won, she noticed that she wasn't getting the recognition and attention that white tennis players were. She left the sport of tennis and broke color barriers in the sport of golf. She became the first black woman to compete on the pro tour. Althea Gibson said, no matter what accomplishments you make, somebody helped you. I hope that I have accomplished just one thing that I have been a credit to tennis and my country. I had to fight for what I have achieved. Arthur Ashe picked up his first tennis racket at the age of seven. He won back-to-back -back junior national titles in 1960 and 1961. As the fifth best junior tennis player in the country, he received a scholarship to attend UCLA. In 1963, he became the first African-American player to ever be selected to the United States Davis Cup team and ended up winning four team competitions. In 1965, he moved up to third best in the country and won the NCAA's single and doubles title, which helped UCLA win the NCAA championship. He's the first African American to win the men's singles title at Wimbledon and the US Open, and still remains the only one to do so. He's the first African American man to be ranked number one, and the first African American man to be inducted into the Tennis Hall of Fame. He won three Grand Slam singles titles in his career. Arthur Ashe said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. As the goalie for her high school soccer team, Brianna Scurry played a key role in helping her team win the Minnesota State Championship in 1989. The game ended in a shootout. She also played floor hockey, softball, basketball, and ran track. She was named the top female athlete of her school, as well as Minnesota's top female athlete. She attended UMass Amherst, where she was ranked as the third best goalie in the nation by her senior year. In 1993, she was named the National Collegiate Goalkeeper of the Year. In her first game on the U.S. Women's National Team in 1994, she recorded a shutout against Portugal. At the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia, her team won the gold medal. In the 1999 Women's World Cup, in the final game that led to a shootout against China, Scurry saved one of the penalty shots that helped to lead the team to victory. In 2000, she was one of the founding members and players of the Women's United Soccer Association. She played for three years for the Atlanta Beat. At the 2004 Summer Olympics in Greece, the team won the gold medal again. In 2010, 
She was inducted into the Minnesota State High School Hall of Fame. In 2011, she was inducted in the inaugural class of the Anoka High School Hall of Fame. And in 2017, she became the first female goalkeeper and first black woman to be inducted into the National Soccer Hall of Fame. Brianna Scurry said, A champion is someone who does not settle for that day's practice, that day's competition, that day's performance. They are always striving to be better. They don't live in the past. Carl Lewis became one of the best track and field athletes in the country while in high school. He qualified for the 1980 Olympics, but did not participate because of the U.S. boycott of the Games in Moscow. He won the Sullivan Award for Best Amateur Athlete who demonstrates qualities of leadership, citizenship, character, and sportsmanship on and off the field in 1981. While at the University of Houston, he became the second person in NCAA history to win the 100 meter run and the long jump in the collegiate championships. The first person to do that was Jesse Owens. In 1984, at the Summer Olympic Games in Los Angeles, California, he won the gold in the same four events that Jesse Owens did 48 years earlier. He was part of Team USA in the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, South Korea, the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, and the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. His career medal count is 22 gold medals, 3 silver medals, and 3 bronze medals. 10 of those medals are from Olympic Games. In 1984, the Dallas Cowboys drafted Lewis in the NFL draft, even though he had never played college football. They drafted him simply because of his natural athleticism. The Chicago Bulls followed suit and drafted him in the NBA draft, although he never played basketball. In 2001, he was inducted into the USA Track and Field Hall of Fame. He is known as one of only three Olympians to win the same individual event four times, the long jump. He is also one of only four Olympic athletes to win nine gold medals. Carl Lewis said, It's all about the journey, not the outcome. Charlie Sifford entered the world of golf at the age of 10 when he earned money as a golf caddy at a local golf course. He entered tournaments for black golfers and from 1948 to 1960, he won the Negro National Open six times. He broke the color barrier in one of the nation's most elitist sports in 1960. Sifford decided to tee off at golf clubs that wouldn't allow him to use their restaurants or facilities and ignored the name-calling that came his way along the course. He faced much racism during his career during the times of segregation. He once hit a hole-in-one on the golf course and was supposed to win a $100,000 bonus and a new car, but they simply wouldn't give it to him. He later sued the tournament, and they had to give him the rewards in the end. In 2004, he became the first African-American inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. In 2014, President Barack Obama presented Charlie with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Charlie Sifford said, I wanted to play to prove that a black man could play golf. I didn't want any help. All I wanted was a chance to play. Florence Griffith Joyner, at the age of 14, won the Jesse Owens National Youth Games. She ran track for UCLA and quickly became an NCAA champion. 
She made her Olympic debut at the 1984 Summer Games in Los Angeles, California, and won the silver medal for the 200-meter run. She married Al Joyner, a fellow athlete and the brother of track star Jackie Joyner Kersey, who you will learn about in just a few minutes. This brought about her nickname, Flojo. She won the Sullivan Award for Best Amateur Athlete who demonstrates qualities of leadership, citizenship, character, and sportsmanship on and off the field in 1986. At the 1988 Summer Olympic Games, she took home three gold medals and a silver medal. She retired from competition after the 1988 Olympics and was named the co-chair of the President's Council on Physical Fitness in 1993 by President Bill Clinton. She was inducted into the Track and Field Hall of Fame in 1995. In 2000, the elementary school she went to as a child in Los Angeles was named the Florence Griffith Joyner Elementary School. She is the fastest woman of all time, and more than 34 years later, she still holds the records for the 100-meter run at 10.49 seconds and the 200-meter run for 21.34 seconds. Flojo said, When anyone tells me I can't do something, I'm just not listening anymore. Misty Copeland started dancing ballet at the age of 13. In 1997, Misty won the LA Music Center Spotlight Award as the best dancer in Southern California. She became a soloist in 2007. In 2011, Misty launched a clothing line for dancers called M by Misty. In 2013, she was named the National Youth of the Year Ambassador by the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. In 2014, Misty was named to President Barack Obama's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. In 2015, Misty became the first African-American woman to be promoted to Principal Dancer, the highest rank in the American Ballet Theater history. Misty has released three books, one memoir, a children's book, and a health and fitness guide. In 2016, Mattel created the Misty Copeland Barbie doll. Misty Copeland said, be strong, be fearless, be beautiful, and believe that anything is possible when you have the right people there to support you. Jackie Joyner Kersey was a gifted athlete. She played basketball and volleyball and ran track. She played basketball and ran track while at UCLA. She won the Honda Sports Award in 1984 and 1985, which is given to the nation's best female collegiate track and field athlete. She was also awarded the Honda Broderick Cup in 1985, which is given to the nation's best female collegiate athlete. In the 1984 Summer Olympics in LA, she won the silver medal in the heptathlon, which is seven events. The 100 meter hurdles, the high jump, the shot put, the 200 meter run, the long jump, the javelin throw, and the 800 meter run. In 1986, she won the Sullivan Award for the top amateur athlete in the United States. In 1986 and 1987, she won the Jesse Owens Award Fast forward to 2013, the female recipient of this award was renamed to the Jackie Joyner Kersey Award. In 1988, the Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea, she won the gold medal in the heptathlon and still holds the world record for most points at 7,291. She is the first American woman to win gold in the heptathlon. She won the gold medal in the long jump. She is the first American woman to win gold in the long jump as well. In the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, she again won the gold medal in the heptathlon. She also won the bronze medal in the long jump. 
At the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia, she unfortunately injured her right hamstring and wasn't able to compete in all of her events, but she still managed to win the bronze medal in the long jump. In 2007, Jackie, along with many other professional athletes from various sports, founded Athletes for Hope. This organization helps professional athletes get involved in charitable causes to support many communities. Jackie Joyner Kersey said, don't follow in any footprints, make your own prints because you are the future of tomorrow. Venus Williams started playing tennis at the age of four. By the age of 12, she had a 63-0 record on the Junior United States Tennis Association Tour and ranked number one in the 12 and under division. Her serve was already strong at 100 miles per hour. In 1997, Venus became the first player to be ranked outside of the top 50 players to reach the finals at the US Open. In 1998, she received her first singles title of her career. In 2000, she won her first Grand Slam title. She also won the doubles Grand Slam title with her sister Serena, who you will learn about in just a few minutes. Venus first reached number one ranking in singles in 2002, making her the first African American to do so in the open era of tennis. She's the second all time, just behind Althea Gibson. Venus has won four Olympic gold medals and one Olympic silver medal. She has the fastest recorded serve by a female tennis player at 129 miles per hour. She also holds 12 other records in tennis. She has received numerous awards and honors, including but not limited to SB Awards, Player of the Year, Best Female Athlete, Outstanding Public Service, and the Sportsmanship Award. In her career, she has 49 women's singles titles, 22 women's doubles titles, 7 Grand Slam titles, 14 Grand Slam women's doubles titles, and 2 Grand Slam mixed doubles titles. Venus launched her own interior design company called V-Star Interiors. Venus Williams said, Life is a challenge, but that's the best part. Venus's younger sister, Serena Williams, started playing tennis at the age of three. By the age of 10 in 1991, Serena had a 46-3 record on the Junior United States Tennis Association Tour and ranked number one in the 10 and under division. In 1999, she won the US Open and became the first among the two sisters to win a Grand Slam. Serena has won four Olympic gold medals. She has won 23 Grand Slam singles titles, which is the most of any male or female tennis player. In her career, she has 73 women's singles titles, 23 women's doubles titles, 23 Grand Slam titles, 14 Grand Slam women's doubles titles, and two Grand Slam mixed doubles titles. The Serena Williams Foundation works to build schools in Africa provide college scholarships to underprivileged students around the United States, provide earthquake relief to Haiti, support schools in Jamaica, and much more. In 2011, she was named the UNICEF International Goodwill Ambassador. She started her own clothing line, S by Serena Williams, in 1999. In 2020, she won the ASB Classic in New Zealand and donated all of her prize money to the Australian Bushfire Relief. Serena Williams said, you have to believe in yourself when no one else does.
Monet Davis is one of only 18 girls to ever play in the Little League World Series. She is the first girl to earn a win and to pitch a shutout in the Little League World Series history. She is the first African American girl to play in the Little League World Series and was the first Little League baseball player to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated. At the age of 13, she threw 70 mile per hour fastballs. The range for her age was between 63 and 73 miles per hour. In 2014, Monet donated her jersey to the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. She was named the Sports Illustrated Kids Sports Kid of the Year. In 2015, she released a memoir titled Monet Davis, Remember My Name. That same year, she also designed a line of sneakers with the brand M4D3, Make a Difference Every Day, for girls. The proceeds go towards the Because I Am a Girl initiative. She won the SB Award for Best Breakthrough Athlete in 2015 and currently plays softball at Hampton University. Monet Davis said, I've never thought I'd be a role model at this age. I just have to be myself. When I joined an all-boys baseball team, my mom wasn't too happy. I proved to her, and to me, that I could do anything I set my mind to. Willie O'Ree's grandparents came to Canada, where he was born, from the United States through the Underground Railroad to escape slavery. O'Ree played in many Canadian hockey leagues growing up. At the age of 20, he lost 95% of his vision in his right eye after being hit by a puck that also broke his nose and cheekbone. The doctor told him to stop playing hockey, but he was back on the ice two months later. He couldn't talk about his injury because the league didn't allow players who were blind in one eye to compete. To make up for the loss in vision, he would have to turn his head far over his right shoulder in order to see. During the 1957 and 1958 season, O'Ree's team, the Quebec Aces, had a relationship with the Boston Bruins of the NHL. Any player of the Aces could be brought up to the Bruins at any time. On January 18, 1958, O'Ree became the first black hockey player to play in the NHL on the Boston Bruins. In 1984, he was inducted into the New Brunswick Sports Hall of Fame. Since 1998, O'Ree has been the Director of Youth Development and the Ambassador of Diversity of the NHL. In 2018, he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. In 2020, he was inducted into the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. In 2021, the Boston Bruins retired O'Ree's number 22. In honor of Black History Month, all NHL players are wearing commemorative helmet decals in O'Ree's honor for the month. Willie O'Ree said, I had no idea at all during the game itself about breaking the color barrier. In fact, it wasn't until the next morning that I found out, while opening up the newspaper at breakfast. I was looking for my name in the box score. Instead, I found it in the headline. <laughs>